Good morning from St. John's Episcopal Church in and beyond Old Town Saginaw in the Diocese of Eastern Michigan. Today is June the 14th of 2020, the second Sunday after Pentecost. Our readings are from proper six of year A. The bulletin for today's Liturgy of the Word can be downloaded from our Facebook and YouTube posts as well as the St. John's website. With you at home, this is St. John's and St. Matthew's worshiping together online. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. your household, the church, and your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion for the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Israelites had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, 
you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one. Everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. The word of the Lord. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though, perhaps, for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease, every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into this harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, James son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, Proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick. Raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers. Cast out demons. You received without payment. Give without payment. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. There's a meme going around Facebook this week that sums up how I've been feeling lately. At the top of the picture are the words, coming in July 2020, followed by a picture of a UFO and a Bigfoot-like creature riding on the Loch Ness Monster. Now that pretty much says it all for me. I don't even ask anymore what else can happen.
because I don't want to know the answer. Since the beginning of March, when we last met in person in our parish communities, we've experienced a global pandemic, a 500-year flood, and the killing of a man who has spurred weeks of mostly peaceful protests against the systemic racism in our country. Many days I felt overwhelmed, overwhelmed by the fact that 115,000 fellow Americans have died of COVID-19, overwhelmed by the fact that millions of people are out of work, overwhelmed by the fact the number of businesses and homes that were destroyed in the flood, and especially overwhelmed by the videos showing a fellow human being dying under the knee of another human being. How do we make sense out of all these events and the feelings that they bring up in us? We may find one possible reading, possible answer in our second reading today from Paul's letter to the Romans. Let me just read a, a bit of that reading again. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. This passage reminds us that while suffering is a part of our lives, there is good that can come from it. Now, please hear this. I am not saying that God causes anything that makes us suffer. But I do believe that God can use our sufferings to bring about good. We've all had times of suffering, perhaps an illness, a job loss, a divorce, the death of a loved one. And when we're going through it, it feels like it will never end. And we can even have times of doubt of God's presence with us. But then given some time, Perhaps weeks, months, even years later, we see that we survived this time of awful suffering, that we endured, and that we've actually learned something and are changed. We are not the same people that we were before we suffered. We have built character. And that character is based on hope. Hope in God's love and presence with us shown to us through the Holy Spirit. And believing in God at all times, especially when God doesn't feel near. Well, we call that faith. As Christians, we are off, called to offer hope and faith to our world. As Episcopalian Christians through our baptismal covenant, we are called to strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being. And we do this not through our own power, but with God's help. Doing this calls us to speak truth to power, to write and call our Congress people to make legal and lawful changes, to perhaps march in protest. Doing this calls us out of our comfort zones as middle-class white people, to empathize and understand our brothers and sisters of different races. Doing this calls us to educate ourselves about our American history both the good parts and the bad. Doing this calls us to talk with our children and our grandchildren and our friends and our community about the sin of racism. Doing this calls us to do something to offer our world hope. I was reading recently about John Newton who was an Anglican clergy person in the 1700s in England. But before he was clergy, he was a slave trader. Eventually, he came to see slavery as unjust and sinful and went on to become a powerful opponent of it. You may not know the, the name of John Newton, but you certainly know the song that he wrote, Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I 
once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Loving God, help us to see and to act. Amen. Let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, which is found on page 358 of your prayer book. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are Form 3, which is found on page 387 of your prayer books. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For the ill of St. Matthews, we pray for Becky, Beth, Jason, Karen, Jim, and Mary Catherine. And for our birthday, Rick Baldwin has a birthday this week. In the St. John's family, we pray for Nancy, Keith, Al, and Jane. Sharon, Sally, David and Nanette, Rod, Dave, Karen, Kurt, and Pam. Our birthdays this week are Dick Mott, Lou Smith, Jeremiah Craniac, and Ned Wetmore. Watch over your servants, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand, comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful, raise them up if they fall, and in their hearts may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Celebrating the wedding anniversary this week are Rochelle and Brad Fergan. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully with his favor look upon you. 
and fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace, that you may live faithfully together in this life and in the age to come have life everlasting. Amen. All wise and loving God, we thank you for all of your gifts, for making us, for saving us in Christ, for calling us to be your people. Look with love on our graduates and bless them as they complete their years of school. May your spirit give them many skills and talents and help them to use these gifts for your glory and for the good of all people. In your kindness, guide them along paths that are level and smooth. We ask these blessings through Christ our Lord. O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love. And work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth. That in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I appeal to you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Good morning, St. John's. One of the texts appointed for today is Psalm 100. This is sometimes called the Jubilate Deo, which in Latin is the first several words of the text in English, O be joyful. It is also commonly sung to the tune Old Hundredth, which some folks know as the doxology. We're going to listen to a setting this morning that is attributed to Mozart, although he did not write it. This is by an unknown 19th century composer who tried his hand at sounding a bit like Mozart. <laughs>
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.